So at this point, we have we feel pretty comfortable, comfortable and confident, comfortable. Um, we feel pretty comfortable and confident in adding things to carbonyls, right? We're going to add them to the carbon. We're going to break the carbon oxygen pi bond, push electrons up on the oxygen. And we've seen this in using H minus as a nucleophile. We've seen this using alcohols and acid alcohols as a nucleophile. And now, most recently, we've done it with nitrogen as nucleophiles. Um, and we've seen a variety of different products, right? We can get alcohols, we can get acetals, hemiacetals, aminals, imines. Right? So what's interesting is that we can start to combine these things and we can start to, because these reactions have so many intermediates that go along the way, we can start to kind of add in new reagents that will allow us to kind of catch those intermediates and react them as the reaction goes on. And so this is um, one of the great examples of that is reductive amination. Now, reductive amination is probably one of the most useful reactions that you will learn in organic one or organic two. If you go on and do um, organic chemistry as any kind of career, you will run at some point, almost assuredly, some reductive amination reactions, just because they're such a great way to make any kind of nitrogen containing compound. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. There's no new um, mechanism or anything. We're just going to combine the mechanisms that we already know and, uh, and make a new reaction out of it. So reductive amination uh, comes when we combine an amine plus a carbonyl, so usually an aldehyde or a ketone. And then we do that in the presence of H minus. Now we're gonna use a slightly different type of H minus. We're gonna use uh, sodium cyanoborohydride. Um, uh, how do they, goodness gracious. All right, so let's pretend that that didn't happen. Sodium cyanoborohydride. And all this is, is this is just one more way of making H minus. Now, sodium cyanoborohydride is special because it's even less, slightly less reactive than sodium borohydride. That cyano group on there, that CN bond is, is, electro, is electron withdrawing enough that it just kind of changes a little bit the reactivity of the sodium cyanoborohydride. What it does, is it doesn't reduce the aldehyde or the ketone. So let's do an example here. Let's take, uh, we'll take a nice simple amine. Let's take benzylamine. And we're going to react that with an aldehyde. And we're, our aldehyde in this case will be cyclopentane carboxaldehyde. There. Right. And then, of course, sodium cyanoborohydride. And so we look at this and we know we have a couple of options, right? We have this carbonyl, clearly something's going to add to this carbonyl because that's why we're talking about it uh, in this unit. Uh, the question is, is it going to be this nitrogen or is it going to be the H minus? We have two possibilities. Um, it turns out that the H minus, because of the way that sodium cyanoborohydride is structured, the H minus is not the strongest nucleophile in this reaction. Instead, what's going to happen first is this nitrogen is going to add to the carbonyl. We're going to break the carbon oxygen pi bond. We're going to push the electrons up onto the oxygen, as is our custom. And that's going to give us our standard addition intermediate, where now the thing that we're going to do is we're going to neutralize this, and we're going to do this in the normal way that we do. We're going to transfer an H+, and we're going to make an aminal. So, previous lectures, we have definitely done this before, right? We have the nitrogen add to the carbonyl, we move the H pluses around, we make an aminal, it's a nice neutral compound. All is well so far. Now, what's going to happen next is we're going to uh, get an H plus onto that oxygen. And that H plus can come from water, it can come from 
Uh, this intermediate, right, we generate an acidic nitrogen here. This can give up H plus very easily, so it could add H plus to a different molecule that has this alcohol there. The H plus can come from somewhere. The actual source of it is not something that we're going to um, dwell on for too long. And of course, now this is going to leave. And this is going to stabilize the resulting carbocation by forming a pi bond. And what we get now is the thing, the intermediate that we've seen before that's almost an imine, right? The only thing is that we still have a positive charge on that nitrogen. Okay, so if this, at this point, if this, all these steps should look familiar to you. If there's anything here that's not making sense or doesn't look familiar, go back to the previous uh, video, the aminals and imines video. We go through that entire mechanism there. This is the same mechanism as before. The only difference here is that instead of losing H plus to get ourselves an imine, we have H minus around. So instead of, my, instead of losing H plus, we're going to add H minus. This is where the sodium cyanoborohydride comes in. This H- is a strong enough nucleophile now that it will react with this carbocation. It will push the electrons off of out of that double bond. That pi bond will become a lone pair now on the nitrogen. And what we get out is our final product. And so notice, of course, what we've done here is a reduction, right? We've gone from having a single hydrogen on this carbon bond, on this carbon. We had one CH bond here. That CH bond remains present throughout this process, even though I never drew it in. It's still there. And then eventually we add another hydrogen there. And so overall, this is a reduction because it's reductive amination and the product is an amine. So that's where reductive amination comes from. We have an aldehyde that becomes an amine through a reduction process. Right? And so what we've done is we've taken a primary amine, right? Amines are determined by how many hydrogens are attached to the amine. So in this case, we have two hydrogens and one carbon. The one carbon makes it a primary amine. And our product now is a secondary amine. So this, this nitrogen has two carbons attached to it. That makes it a secondary amine. So reductive amination, if you take an amine and react it with an aldehyde or a ketone and do that in the presence of sodium cyanoborohydride, reductive amination works very nicely to get us to uh, a secondary, primary amine to a secondary amine. Now, we can do this with a lot of different, any amine will work. So if you start with a primary amine, oops plus whatever, aldehyde or ketone. All right, let's do an example here. Uh, let's use, I gotta have a primary amine, so we'll just use ethylamine. Okay. And for my ketone, I'm gonna make cyclohexanone. Sodium cyanoborohydride. Every time we do this, we are going to get a secondary amine as our product, right? And that secondary am amine will be where the nitrogen ends up attached to the carbon of the carbonyl, right? Because of the, because our first step is the attack of the nucleophile onto that carbonyl carbon. And so, and then we're going to reduce that carbon. And so the carbon will end up with an additional hydrogen attached to it. That hy This hydrogen that I just drew comes from the sodium cyanoborohydride. So you get a secondary amine out. Now you can also do this with secondary amines, right? Secondary amine plus an aldehyde or a ketone. And exactly what you would expect is what happens. So this time I'm gonna use a five membered ring. This is a secondary amine. This nitrogen is already attached to two carbons. We're gonna react it with a with an aldehyde, again, in the presence of sodium cyanoborohydride. And this still works, right? All we have to do is we're replacing that carbonyl is now going to be a carbon nitrogen bond, and we're going to add in another hydrogen at the carbon of the carbonyl. And so we get something that looks like this. And now, of course, this nitrogen is attached to three carbons, so that's a tertiary amine. 
So secondary amine can go up to a tertiary amine, a primary amine can go up to a secondary amine. Now the mechanism for the secondary amine to tertiary amine is exactly the same as it was before. Right, so what we're going to get is we're going to get the aminal formation. This is going to add in. Right, we're going to break the carbon oxygen pi bond, push the electrons up onto the oxygen, and then we're going to move H plus around. So I'm going to do two, I'm going to make two things happen at once. Hopefully that's still followable. Right, so we lose the hydrogen off of the nitrogen, we gain a hydrogen on the oxygen, we get this thing. And now we have to lose water, minus H2O, right? And this uh, lone pair is going to stabilize the resulting, uh, leave, uh, the resulting carbocation. And so what we get is, once again, we get this positively charged intermediate. Here. And then now the sodium cyanide borohydride comes in. That adds there and kicks that out, right? So this process is exactly the same as the one over here. And because we don't have to, because we have another way of getting rid of the positive charge here, we can use a secondary amine and go all the way and, and have this reductive amination process still happen to make a tertiary amine. So this is, um, a, like I said, is a very useful process because people are always, for a lot of pharmaceutical compounds, for a lot of any kind of bioactive compound, you're going to have some nitrogens in there. And so making compounds with nitrogen in them, any process that can do that is going to be incredibly powerful. And so reductive amination is a great way to do it. Sodium cyanoborohydride is cheap. It's easy to work with. It smells a little bit like almonds, but it's not, it's not going to, um, it's not dangerous or anything like that. Um, so it's a really powerful reaction. We use it a lot um, and you'll, we'll get to do some of the worksheets and you'll see kind of what the, how these kinds of things play into synthesis and all that other kind of stuff.